Hey everybody, how's it going? Today, let's take a detailed look at the 2012 Lotus Evora S. And this is going to be a detailed educational presentation on the Evora S. We'll start right up, show the engine, take it on a test drive and go over the performance data, as well as show you a bunch of the unique features on the interior as well as exterior. And a special thanks and shout out to Flo Fisker and Lotus of Winston-Salem, North Carolina for allowing me to come out today and film the 2012 Evora S. And so, without further ado, let's go ahead and start her up, let her run. The exterior color is Evora specific, known as Amethyst Gray, with the full Venom Red leather interior. Ricardo bucket seats, uniquely trimmed for the premium pack sport package, with the carbon effect leather trim coming across the middle and upwards of the top seat, and I'll show that a little bit more in just a second. Close ratio, six speed manual transmission, specially tuned by Lotus. Touch a little bit more on that in just a second also. Beautiful. The steering is hydraulically assisted power rack and pinion with a steering wheel made of magnesium for lighter weight, flat bottom race inspired design, and dark, almost smoky textured aluminum trim going around the center of the steering wheel. It's nice and tight, very precise, with a nice amount of grip bolstering across the side here to keep your hand firmly planted, as well as in standard Evora models, the Evora S is only available in a manual transmission at the moment. For the paddle shift models and the automatics, naturally aspirated equipped cars, it's a nice comfortable position for just easy tapping. The Evora's transmission is also sourced from Toyota along with its power plant, we'll talk about that a little bit more later in the video, but it's a modified close ratio six speed manual, nice and tight shifts, pull up, over, back for reverse, and activates an integrated backup camera. The shifter also features modified linkages from the previous 2011 model year to give a little bit more of a clean, crisp shift under heavier acceleration. Aluminum accenting, leather top shift knob with the Lotus insignia located up top, as well as color mash accenting coming down the bottom, and a leather wrap shift boot. And just to make mention for completeness sake, the standard Avora models, you can get an optional six speed intelligent precision shift automatic transmission, otherwise known as the IPS. Basically, it allows for smooth automatic changes like a, just a normal automatic transition would with a more spirited driving pleasure of paddle shifters. And we're gonna cut on the headlamps as well as the hazards. The windows are automatic down. And we're gonna check out the exterior, shall we? The Lotus Evora S is an absolute engineering masterpiece with blistering track-ready performance as well as everyday usability. With the lines of a sleek and beautiful coupe, you can either have your set of a two-seater configuration or a two-plus-two configuration if you're going to be hauling any smaller passengers in the rear. Essentially everything about the Evora is designed for a purpose, every which way from the styling to the cutouts in the side of the body panels all the way to the lightweight aluminum counterparts that make up the suspension to make a fantastic blend between handling and performance in a lightweight vehicle. Starting up at the front here when you have this wide mouth grille it actually funnels air through those air vents that you see up top to go over the windshield and actually create more downforce for the vehicle as it climbs at higher speeds. And with the overall styling, sharp lines, and aggressive front end, it definitely reminds me of a characteristic praying mantis. Nicely finished off with a set of bi-xenon projector headlamps. 
The Lotus of Vora can essentially be thought of as a competitor towards the other lights such as the Porsche Cayman. But the edge that the Avora has, especially in its 2 plus 2 configuration, it actually is the only four-seater mid-mounted sports car available on the market today, which definitely wins in its favor for practicality. The particular wheels on this Avora S are from the design series. They're featuring satin gunmetal forged aluminum alloy units with 19-inch wheels in the front and 20-inch in the back, mounted on a set of Pirelli P0 Corsa tires measuring 235-35 in the front and 275-35 in the rear. Stopping power is provided by an upgraded set of AP Racing servo-assisted cross-drilled ventilated disc brakes a part of the sport package, features 350mm front discs and 332mm rear discs with four piston calipers front and rear. Overall length is 171.6 inches with a width of 77.6 inches and a height of 48.3 inches, and a lightweight package measuring around 3,165 pounds. And like I was saying at the beginning, the Avora is essentially designed to be both strong yet light. But with all the different design body stylings and everything like that, the different curves coming around the vehicle, it's actually able to scoop all of the air in in the right places as much as possible to either increase downforce or increase engine cooling. Plenty of vents grace the rear deck as well as coming around that rear window accented by the black accents, a part of the S package. You also see that beautiful supercharged V6 gazing at you from the inside of the engine bay. Now as we come across the side of the vehicle here, you'll notice some of the indentions in the side that can actually channel the air around the vehicle, keeping it nice and tight, yet bringing in that engine cooling up at the top panel. Down below, to increase its slipstream effect, there's actually essentially no gaps underneath for the most part. It's all solid panels that would normally be released for, um, like services and things like that. And just touching a little bit on the back too, has an upgraded rear diffuser, as well as a specially designed rear spoiler to help channel the rest of that air throughout the back of the vehicle. Sloping the indention coming across the roof line, you see a little bit more from this angle here how the air is kind of channeled through those vents and wrapping around the top of the windshield. And just a little close up of some of the unique black exterior trim a part of the S package. Full LED tail lamps out back with integrated indicator markers. As we walk around, you'll see a little bit more of that pronounced rear diffuser sticking out from the back, nice and robust. Finishing with a more freely flowing, robust and aggressive exhaust system with integrated bypass valve that automatically opens after a certain RPM and speed, or by activating the vehicle's sport performance system, it actually opens up that bypass valve to increase flow as well as increase a little bit more of a pronounced growl. We'll talk about that a little bit more in just a second during the test drive portion. You also have Outback finishing that rear backup camera as well as the integrated rear parking assist in that larger, more pronounced diffuser, still reminding you that the Avora is also not only a track vehicle, but a comfortable vehicle that you can drive on a daily basis. So we're going to pop the engine cover. The Lotus Avora features a mid-mounted transverse 3.5 liter dual overhead cam Toyota Source V6 with 24 valves and variable valve timing and intelligence. And while standard Avora models are naturally aspirated, the S version gets a little bit of forced induction thanks to a Harrop HTV1320 supercharger utilizing Eaton TVS technology. With multi-point sequential fuel injection as well as a direct ignition system, the Avora S puts out a total horsepower output of around 345 at 7,000 RPM and a maximum torque output at around 295 at 4,500 RPM. Zero to 60 mile an hour times is around 4.4 seconds with a top speed of 178 miles an hour. Now that's quite a bump in horsepower compared to the naturally aspirated version. The naturally aspirated version has a 4 tenths of a second slower 0 to 60 time and only 163 mile an hour top speed. And with a car that weighs just over 3,100 pounds, that's quite a lot of muscle to be able to throw around in such a lightweight vehicle, which makes the Avora a perfect track and handling vehicle overall, nice and balanced. And as for fuel economy data on the Avora S, equipped with the manual transmission, it's around 17 City 26 Highway, where it's 20 City 28 Highway for the automatic gearbox with a 15.6 gallon fuel tank on premium gas. And the trunk space is also pretty good for a car in this class, with a little storage net, just enough space to fit a standard set of golf clubs. The top of the engine cover is also laced in leather. Coming across this midsection here, tinted rear glass with the rear defroster. Beautiful and sophisticated engineering. The interior of the Avora S is absolutely beautiful, with a little bit of material improvement from the previous year, utilizing a little bit more of leather padded trim. As you can see, going across the door panel, it's entirely wrapped in leather. Nice, soft, and contoured, with black color contrast stitching coming around key areas. Padded handle, 
as well as your power windows you saw earlier, your power mirrors are located a little further up. You also have black veneer trim gracing the door panels, kind of match it across the pillars as well as the mirrors. The black theme also applies to the speaker grills located down below. And you also have little aircraft inspired vents that are chrome accented, a little stylistic key to the interior. The overall build quality and sense of refinement absolutely greets passengers and the driver as coming into the vehicle featuring hand built quality twin stitch leather padding as well as a vast array of aluminum accenting throughout the interior. Now as I mentioned earlier, all of that dark smoky accented and brushed aluminum trim is all new for 2012. It replaces the standard aluminum trim found in the previous model years giving a little bit more of an aggressive look. And I'll touch on this a little bit more later in the video also but all of the knobs and interior buttons are also crafted out of aluminum. You also have logoed floor mats, aluminum sport pedals, as well as a manual tilting telescoping steering wheel. Now with the premium pack sport package that I mentioned at the beginning of the video, this particular Evora comes with a set of upgraded and highly bolstered Recaro lightweight sport bucket seats. With the accented black color contrast piping going around the side as well as the carbon effect leather trim, it gives the seat quite a unique and definitely a much more sportier look compared to the counterpart. Nicely finished off with the stitched Lotus insignia as well as the Recaro stamp located on the side bolster. So let's go ahead and see if she sounds. It's a beautiful melodic note. Plus, you gotta love the little touches of supercharger wine. So we're going to shut her up. Now I've mentioned it in the video a couple times already, but I figured it was an appropriate time to go a little bit more in depth now. The standard Avora can come with what's known as the Sport Pack. It's a sport suspension as well as performance system designed to give an overall increase in the driving dynamics of the vehicle. Now the Avora S actually comes standard with this system. It's paired with Lotus's Dynamic Performance Management System, otherwise known as DPM, which is basically an addition to the Avora's safety features by offering extra stability and traction control, essentially when you need it the most. Now with the Sport Pack, you have a little sport button located on the dash that actually alters the DPM settings with the touch of a button for a heightened dynamic experience. Basically what that does is it increases the throttle response as well as the rev limit, not only mentioning, like I said before, the exhaust bypass valve usually opens up around 4700 RPM, in sport mode it automatically opens at 1500 RPM. And in cars equipped with the IPS automatic gearbox with the manual paddle shifter, sport mode actually will increase the shifting firmness giving you a little bit more feedback from the transmission. Overall essentially designed to give a completely different driving experience for the owners of Aura. The most amazing thing about the Avora is how it drives. It features independently forged aluminum double wishbone front and rear suspension with beefy anti-roll bars with Bill Stein high performance gas dampeners front and rear and I bought coaxial coil springs front and rear. This provides an amazing tight suspension that can essentially take any corner you throw at it with pure essential grace and poise. And 
what's also nice about the Evora also is usually when a car has that tight of a suspension to take a corner with just brutal power, it usually tends to suffer on the ride quality by providing a much more harsher, choppier feeling vehicle, especially on rougher roads. The Evora, that isn't the case, it's actually quite smooth, a lot smoother than you would expect out of a vehicle that handles as well as it does. Lotus really engineered the car to be able to truly have track ready performance while not beating up the driver along the way. For 2012, the Avora also gets a new Pioneer in-dash navigation CD MP3 mobile media interface with your in-dash CD player located up top. You have a manually dimming rear view mirror with the navigation system. It also comes with hands-free Bluetooth telephone with a microphone placed up top. Also, your garage home link. Interior illumination. To use the nav system, basically there's a security feature over here. You can push this button and release this control panel when leaving the vehicle for an anti-theft purpose. In-dash CD player, like I said, located up there. It's a single disc, micro SD card slot located here. HD radio ready. It also comes with satellite radio. Located off to the left is all of your radio modes, AM, FM, the Sirius, hands-free Bluetooth streaming of audio for your capable device. Very simple, there's not too many complicated controls. If you hit mode, bring up the navigation screen, show your radio data at the bottom of the screen, little in-navigation menu, set up systems, inputting favorite places, points of interest, route detours, and all the like. Basically hitting mode switches from the audio and the navigation. If you go up to home, you can input your destination. Basically just walk through the different screens. Favorite places, history, points of interest. Setting up your phone. And back to the AV sources. Equalizer settings. Seek on either side, as well as your preset stations. The 2011 Avora had more of a standard colored aluminum pattern coming through the interior, but now it's more of a textured, smoky accented interior. So, as it comes across down here, it also comes around the speedometer cluster and audio interface, wrapping around the lighting controls. Adding to the solidness feeling of the interior are the solid aluminum billet toggle switches, as well as the buttons located around the vehicle. Now, you have your simple to use climate control located down below with your fan speed, temperature, front and rear defrost, your different zones, AC, and recycling. As you come across the center console, you also notice the stitching of the leather, trimming the entire thing, then integrated center armrest, aluminum hinge, nice touches. The little buttons to the right of the steering wheel column include the lock and unlock, rear engine cover, glove box opener, heated seat for the driver's side, heated seat for the passenger side, as well as your display brightness. You also have cruise control, aiding to the everyday drivability of the Evora. And a very simple, easy to read gauge cluster. Off to the side, you have little LCD accenting, illuminated in red for your driver information system located off to the right and left. Now, if you click that little info button located on the left of the turn signal stop, you can change between menus. Alrighty. So let's go to shut her down. And we're going to check out the back seat. The Evora also aids to its extra practicality by being a 2 plus 2 configuration vehicle. Seat's easy to move up, kind of locks in place there so it doesn't fly back, with a very modest back seat. There are actually integrated child seat anchors in the back for smaller children and car seats. A little storage off to the side. You see your power outlet down below there. And it also has the carbon effect leather trim coming down the middle of the seats, as well as portions of the lower cushion. So let's go and check out the rest of the vehicle, shall we? Down below in the little footwell, if you press that, it'll release a fluid reservoir in the front of the car. Just lift up this little middle portion here.
your manually adjusting passenger seat as well. Off the glove box, like I said, from this button here. Modest storage space with your auxiliary and iPod integration. The Lotus Evora, a beautiful track ready car that you can essentially daily drive without a hindrance of the lack of practicality. A beautiful blend between two worlds. Well everyone, I hope you enjoyed this in-depth look at the 2012 Lotus Evora S. Be sure to stay tuned next time, there's a lot more where that came from. Take care everybody.